Okay, welcome everybody to the hack file system hosted by ETH Global. We're going to get started right now. Um, so this event had 650 hackers from 61 different countries and 18 different time zones. And the way we're going to judge today is four minutes for a demo, three minutes for questions with the judges and a 10 minute break every six to eight teams. Um, and the criteria is pretty simple. We're going to be judging on technicality, originality, practicality, the UI design, and the wow factor, of course. Um, just noting that this is not a competition. We're just here to learn and to explore what is possible. And we're not aiming to be, we're not aiming to become businesses. And hackers are here to get feedback from the judges. Um, now I'd like to introduce Bernard and Emmanuel as our wonderful judges. Um, they will be giving you feedback today. And if the first team is ready, we can go ahead and get started. Hey Mike, we don't have audio. Would you mind sharing that again? The value of an NFT is derived from its unique story. That story includes how the token was minted, press about the artist or team, trading and on-chain info, certifications, related items, and a lot more. But right now, there isn't a way to provably tie all of that data to the token. That's what Fungiproof is here to solve. Fungiproof is a grading and enrichments platform for the metaverse that enables NFT collectors and creators to aggregate and show off everything about their token that makes it stand out from the rest. It does this through a user-friendly experience that lets anyone upgrade, customize, and continue interacting with their NFTs long after they've been minted. Over the last few weeks, our team has combined many of the amazing platforms and technologies involved with HackFS to create our first functioning prototype for NFT enriching. Let's check it out. The initial screen for the enrichments demo is an NFT wallet dashboard. The demo is built on top of the Mumbai Polygon testnet. So first I'll connect a wallet to the Mumbai network and connect to the DAP. Once connected, the wallet's NFTs are retrieved from the Covalent API and cached into a textile thread DB collection. All the tokens displayed in the wallet were custom built for this demo and minted on Mumbai. Clicking on a token grades the token if it hasn't already been graded and takes you to the token's profile. The profile view displays the token's grade, the token's image wrapped in a paper case, enrichments which are available for purchase, and the token's event history. Once a token's been graded, owners can encase their token. Encasing a token places all the token's data into a ceramic registry file and ensures the information about this token will never be lost. Encased tokens can further be enriched. In this demo, we've implemented the ability to upgrade a token's grade by backing up its assets directly to Filecoin and tying that back up to the original NFT through an enrichment contract. Once enrichments have been applied to a token, we can view all the token's data. The data includes the hash to the token, the token's registry file, its grade, including all of its upgrades and all of its associated enrichments. We display the event change log containing all the events that have occurred to this NFT. This event log is made possible by querying all the ceramic commits made to the NFT's profile and outputting the change in timestamp that occurred for each commit. Lastly, I'm going to talk a bit more about the tech we built that powers this DAP. The first is a new contract standard we're calling a non fungible enrichment. NFEs are an extended ERC-1155, where the 1155 token can be bound to another NFT. Once bound, the owner relinquishes control over the token and gives it to another NFT. 
The second is our ceramic registry. The registry acts as an NFT index, where NFTs are stored using their DID as the key and an associated ceramic tile for each NFT's profile. The entire registry in each NFT is pinned, and once it's available, it'll be archived to Filecoin to ensure the data persists. In addition, we plan to use the NFT DID provider in the future to enable the NFT's profile to be editable only by the NFT owner. For our data backup upgrade, we combine the power of Web3.storage and our non-fungible enrichment to create a backup for NFTs which is immutable and provable. We believe this functionality is critical for the NFT space to prevent lost NFT assets and rug pulls. Nice. Thank you so much. We'll be moving on to the Q&A and feedback with the judges. All right, well, uh, I guess I'll just uh, shooting it great. This look, looks awesome. This is obviously a very relevant topic. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about new standard and uh, how you tie that to the NFT. Can you elaborate a little bit on that and uh, how you see that standard being adopted by others? Sure, yeah. So the idea is that we basically can take an 1155 NFT um, and be able to mint various different types of items, things, and we're we're starting out specifically with cases and then the backup to kind of prove the concept. Um, but the way that it works is it starts out as a regular 1155, and then we added an enrichment method uh, and a, a couple other methods to the contract. When you call the enrichment method, you pass in, in another NFT. Um, so probably like a 721, for example, or another 1155, as long as it's non-fungible. And then when you pass in that NFT, it binds it to that NFT as the parent, and then it actually burns it for the original owner. Um, so the idea is that the owner of that non-fungible enrichment is then the NFT as opposed to the personal wallet address. Um, I think I could definitely see it being adopted by other platforms, especially gaming platforms or um, other marketplaces. And you know, we could, we could see the ability to tie all sorts of external information and certifications or, um, you know, really any relevant information about an NFT to an existing NFT. Um, and it's just something we don't see or we haven't seen yet. So I think it could be really useful or helpful for the space. Yeah, very cool. Thank you. Right. Amazing one, guys. I think it's really interesting for me to see that you walked across um, like very extended time zones and I would say kudos to you on that for pulling this off. Good one, Thanks. guys. Good one. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we'll now be moving on to Team MDTP. If you're ready to present, please share your screen. I uh, just open up. Um, cool, I'm starting. This is our presentation on MDTP. So our team is comprised of myself and Christian, both long-term friends and crypto enthusiasts. Right. Our inspiration for the hackathon is milliondollarhomepage.com. It was created in 2005, essentially as a virtual ad board, where the creator sold 1 million pixels for $1 each in 10 by 10 pixel blocks. It went viral at the time, was a huge success. However, the internet has come a long way since. And so earlier in this year, during the ethical Global NFT hack, the idea for milliondollartokenpage.com was born, which for brevity, we're now calling MDTP. Here, we represent the 10,000 10 by 10 pixel blocks with 10,000 ERC721 NFTs, which can be bought, sold, and traded through OpenSea's marketplace, as with any other NFT. Owning an NFT then allows you to update its image and content on this large content board as often as you like. Our vision is for MDTP to be a long-lasting project that takes on a life of its own through the community. We want to support the site for as long as possible until one day, ideally, outlives even us. For this to happen, we need to decouple as much of the site from our servers as possible. MDTP is primarily a front-end and, blo and blockchain-based app. However, we have our own back-end for performance reasons, such as caching the content data. Up until now, we've also kept much of this data in our own S3 buckets. But in this hackathon, we've made it such that all our content is now stored on IPFS. We've uploaded both the NFT metadata and the grid's default data to IPFS and pinned this using Infura. Meanwhile, for all user uploaded content, we're now making use of 
the web3 dot storage library to send it over to ipfs2 so enough chit chat let me run you through a demo right our basic motto is interact trade and share as you interact with the site you can select a token and view its content on the side panel you can then mint new ones uh, or bid on those that have already been sold and update any that you own and through our handy little menu here it's super easy to learn more about the project to share it or join our uh, community channels so i'll run you through an example of minting which is what most new users will do remembering that we're still in beta on and running on Rinkoby. so to begin with you can select any token um, that's yet to be taken such as this one and then i can select mint and either mint a single one or mint a group minting is as simple as just submitting this transaction but i'm actually not going to do that because i don't want to wait for the transaction to go through instead i'll just jump down here where i've already minted a group of tokens to and set them to jay-z's crypto punk updating the minted tokens is then dead simple you just fill in the fields that will show up here in a sec um, the title the description here we go the title the description i'm going to set the height and width to all nine tokens change it to you know real with f global upload the image just to make sure it's the right one and select update and we'll have the transaction go through now all this content data will be uploaded to ipfs through the web 3 storage library and our back end will simply cache it in the background while we're waiting for that to happen i'll just roam around a little so that you can see other uh, things that we've got on the site so far it's mainly f global projects um oh okay and if i go to the token you can see there it's updated keeping it real with f global right so now that you've seen um the demo you can see that the site is almost finished we're working on some final touches and hope to launch on mainnet by the end of the month our key focus now is really on building community and considering we're both devs there's quite a learning curve here but our goal is to make a long lasting and vibrant community and we're certain that in time we'll get there uh, take note that what you've seen is just the start we're hoping that the community will actually do all sorts of creative exciting things with this virtual content space and will continually adapt and build tools for their ever evolving needs so yes Thank you for listening. Please follow us on Twitter, jump into our Discord channels and try out our current beta um, by simply visiting the site, remembering that it's on Rinkaby. We're giving out free NFTs for those who mint now while we're in beta. So please jump in now and invite your friends and followers. Thank you. All right, we'll be moving on to the um, judges feedback. Thank you very much, MDTP. Thank you. Manuel, you go first this time. Yeah, um, I was hoping you would have a question to ask because um, I just want to confirm that you mentioned you started building this at um, the NFTs mm -hmm. hack, the NFTs hack, right? Okay, great. Just that and the great UI, by the way, amazing, impressive. Yeah, work. it's actually the UI has been the majority of our problems. Uh, the the, oh. the NFT stuff is relatively straightforward. Oh, okay, great, great, great. All right, very cool, guys. This is awesome. Uh, been a big fan of the original, so uh, uh, I think you're doing an amiable job of uh, approximating it, if not exceeding it, which in it by itself is an awesome feat. Question for you guys. How do you see this project going on as a community project, for example, to change, to, to make multiples, to have DAOs basically create new virtual spaces based on your contribution yeah. and take off from there? Very cool. Actually, this is one of the things we discussed the most internally with, with me and Nasser. Um, and what we're starting, what we're hoping to start with is like a space for NFT owners to, to show off their NFTs, right? So there's a lot of these new animal-based, uh, um, okay, my favorite ones, the camel so far, are the animal-based ones. So then hopefully we're, we're, we're hoping to create a DAO around that, right? So like once the tokens are taken up, then we as a group decide like what features we want to add and like what the direction is next. I think one of our strong pieces is like the NFT world at the moment is this kind of like collectible and artwork. There's like two, two things happening, but as time goes forward, it will be very much like, we, we see it going into many more um, kind of real world use cases and how that reflects onto here, I think is something we can't predict. So 
really the answer is I don't know, but the answer is very much to make it a part of the of the ownership of a token, which is why one of the reasons that we're, we're we we are quite limiting on how many times people can mint, how many tokens people can mint, and how much um, you can own within a block. Like we want there to be lots of ownership and lots of ideally different types of projects on there, so that uh, it takes an interesting direction rather than just you know just being um, collectibles. Um, but that is where we want to start. Uh, very cool, very cool. I'm gonna keep following the project for sure. Very well done. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. We'll be moving on to Team Nifty. If you are ready to present, please share your screen. Nifty is a geolocation media anchoring dApp. Leave favorite memories in emotionally triggered locations. Digitize your time capsules for future loved ones to uncover. Graffiti your name, your favorite print for others to mesmerize. Let the physical world be your showroom. It's where Pokemon Go meets Facebook. With Nifty, you can explore a digital layer on top of the physical world around you. It's a decentralized application where you can explore the metaverse of creators mapping their digital content, art, or media to physical locations by way of GPS coordinates. For digital creators, the application will allow them to clean a GPS coordinate and imprint their favorite media. It's like graffiti, but for digital content. But unlike graffiti, it's a clean way to express oneself. And unlike graffiti, you can sell, buy, or market the content, earn an audience, likes, views, and clicks, and monetize these statistics by receiving a share of advertisement revenue for digital billboards placed in close proximity. For consumers, Nifty will be a physical media platform where entertainment means traveling with friends and strangers to discover new content and a place to earn and speculate on NFT treasures. It's decentralized and sensor resistant. Nifty is built using decentralized technologies so that no one party can hold a claim to the infrastructure and content. Nifty allows creators to mint digital content as NFTs through the use of smart contracts. The digital content is forever stored on IPFS by way of NFT storage. The geolocation GPS coordinate layer is stored on ceramic. For geography proximity mapping and filtering, Fluence is used as the compute layer. Superfluid Finance will be used to rent billboards. Here's a short demo of the front-end application built with React. To use the application, you will need location services turned on. We'll see three views, Explore, Feed, and Mint. Explore is where you see all the NFTs around you. Feed is where you see the actual content of those NFTs around you. And you can also interact with the content, uh, view other details, descriptions, and titles. Then you have the Mint view, where you can mint a token. Right now, we're minting with MetaMask Wallet in the Kovan network. What happens in the back end is that the image is first stored on nft.storage then the nft is actually is mint using the uri of nft.storage in the Kovan testnet which is going to be polygon next then after that ceramic is holding the gps location and then we'll use fluence to retrieve that gps data so that we can map it in our explore function and also retrieve that feed content as well Thank you. Okay, we'll now be moving on to the judges' feedback. Thank you very much. Very cool, interesting, super interesting project. Uh, I got a question for you. Explain to me a little bit how do how that billboard renting the rental is going to work. You're mute, Mike. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, the the rental is still on. Uh, uh, I still thinking about that, but it's gonna be uh with Superfluid Finance, I think. Um, the way it would be basically the uh, what I think is the advertisers would choose uh, the location where they want their um 
their their advertisements are replaced, their billboards are replaced. Uh, they'll be able to see the statistics on the entities around. So they'll be able to place their statistics in a GPS location. They uh, will mint that uh, uh, will mint an NFT for them. And then as long as they pay their uh, what's it called their cash flow on a continuous basis, then they'll hold that spot. Then from there, um, once that cash flow is paid out to the application, then the application will distribute those funds to the NFT holders in the surrounding area as well. Does that answer your question? Oh yeah, absolutely. Very, very cool. So, so that's just, this, that's the potential of the project moving towards. Yes. Very cool. Okay. Gotcha. Awesome. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think the only thing I want to add is pretty impressive that you put this off during the course of the hackathon and uh, kudos on that. Great work on this, man. Thank you. Yeah. And you had me checking my doors here to see if this was where doors you are opening and closing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm just saying from the demo video, there was uh, the sound of closing and opening doors. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's just fine, man. It's great. Yeah. Great job, man. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nifty. We'll now be moving on to Team 2C Publisher. If you're ready, please present. Okay. Sounds good. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so let's get started. Welcome to Bio Publisher. Bring your own front end and publish it. Political regulations and censorship have no power here, or at least this is what we want to believe. Through this, our beloved Web3 ecosystem has serious blind spots in regard to true censorship resistance. Interacting with the blockchain is not a trivial task. That's why why we are putting all our efforts to bring great user experience through our front-end applications. However, a big part of the architecture of many dApps requires traditional Web2 centralized solutions. This is potentially a problem that could affect thousands of users if a restriction policy is deployed. This is bad news, but there is still hope. My name is Alfredo Bonilla, and it's an honor to present you the Bio Publisher team, conformed by Alonso Vargas, Roy Rivera, and Alvaro Grant, a team of Costa Ricans who want to make the web a better place for all of us, where no one can harm our right to participate in it. Inspired by Web3 Storage and Ceramic IDX, we designed a concept that allows the user to upload their frontend and DAP files to IPFS, making them available to everyone, everywhere. But at the same time, giving them the capability of being signed by a trusted team of developers. With BioPublisher, you can use your own user interface to interact with any smart contract out there by using Web3 Storage Platform to host the static files of a dApp. For this hackathon, we built a proof of concept for file uploading functionality. So users are able to upload and check the information of their dApps in an easy way making them ready to be verified by any identity management system such as Ceramic IDX. In the future, BioPublisher is intended to be part of a suite of scripts that will allow the users to securely identify any published tab by a trusted network, making it easier to choose which tab is a good fit for them. For any inquiries, feel free to contact us at hello at 2 cio Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. We'll now be moving on to the feedback portion. So Bernard, you can go first, please. Okay. Uh, very, inter very interesting approach. I really like that, uh, uh, taking the blind spot out of Web3. That's very much needed. Can you uh, expand a little bit on uh, on your sort of get how, how you get the interface bindings to all these different smart contracts? Okay, so right now we are uh, leveraging the Web3 storage to uh, communicate with uh, to APFS, and that is happening uh, via the corresponding uh, API that is being integrated uh, um, into the front end to. Uh, by creating uh, an extra layer, uh, the uh, buy of record, to make sure that we can save the metadata uh, accordingly. Um, 
that uh, by itself, it sounds like a file uploading tool, but the, the purpose is to integrate it with another um, solution that will make sure that we can uh, get a, a, a trusted uh, resource based on, on uh, using IDS Ceramic and uh, graphs. Okay, uh, sorry. So, so how do you how do you get the? Uh, I'm just so interested. How do you get the the trust that the saved interface is actually the appropriate interface? Okay, so right now uh, th this part is, is part uh, of the, the of the next steps, the for the future uh, projects. But yeah, the, right now uh, the the purpose is that we will then have uh, like uh, using the IDX and ceramic. Um, and have an, uh, another solution that will be presented by another team so that we can have trusted groups based on, um, on, the, on the different brands. Each user uh, belongs to a specific group and that group will be then select the front end that uh, is secure. So basically a way to make sure that the front end that we are presenting uh, is, is, is secure enough um, and we can uh, um, once it deployed. Yeah, it's, 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 um... gotcha. gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, I think the only thing for me is just to confirm that you've been working on this um, for a very long time now. Like you didn't just do this for the hackathon only, right? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Like you've been working on this for a while now, right? Yeah, we have been working in this. Great, great, great work, man. Pretty impressive. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. So today I'll be presenting Carve.org, a modern scientific publishing platform based on IPFS. So about the team, I'm Hugo Roussel, a French cybersecurity student based in Lausanne. I'm solo team since all my friends were in vacations. Um, so since I'm about to graduate, I spent a lot of time on archive.org uh, this summer. And I realized that it was a platform that had a lot of problems. So first off, as a little bit of context, archive.org is a major player with 1.2 million visitors a day, top uh, 2,300 websites, but with centralized servers and a review process that is non-transparent. There are also concerns about censorship. So I put two articles here. Um, Nicola Gisin from the University of Geneva wondering about whether students were being blacklisted from the, the platform and also a personal story by Brian Josephson, a Nobel Prize winner in physics, whose article was um, kept in review for too long and then misclassified. So as a solution, I present kaiva.org, we, where we can host paper on IPFS. So we inherit all the very nice properties of IPFS, like old resistance and everything. Um, the review process is community-based, a bit like Wikipedia, with uh, fund, uh, with staking funds for civil resistance and uh, things like quadratic funding to avoid people with uh, too much capital uh, being able to vote too much. And also potential for experiments in new forms of scientific funding using NFTs, for example. So what has been done during this hackathon? Uh, parse the scientific taxonomy and create a modern web application. So the, the interface is 30 year old, so it was not that hard to create something a bit more enjoyable to browse. Um, so upload um, 1.9 million um, metadata of articles on IPFS and index them correctly to display them on the website and download all the scientific papers starting from 2000 to 2012 and being slowly uploaded to IPFS and an experimental feature mint paper as an NFT. So what's next? Uh, I grossly underestimated the time that it would take to upload uh, more or less one terabyte of data uh, of source and PDF files to IPFS. My connection was bad at, uh, during the summer and one had a better connection, it was already too late to do it. In, in time. Um, we should define and deploy community-based reviewing process and improve uh, the web application. So let's jump right into the demo. Here we can see that we have the taxonomy clearly laid out. So let's take a look at computer science, for example, cryptography and security, 
here uh, you have a little explanation of uh, the category um, and then you have uh, the recent articles that were appeared so you can expand uh, as a pragmatic solution since not all the papers are uploaded on IPFS you can check them out and archive now and um, you can browse by year and by date uh, by month, uh, quite easily so um, in conclusion, the application is itself hosted on IPFS with Flick. You can visit today at uh, carivat.org. My GitHub is here. Stars and PRs are welcome. It's a difficult problem. I will gladly welcome some help. Thanks a lot. All right, we'll be opening it up for questions with the judges and feedback. Yeah, I mean, just feedback, yeah super intrigued by the slick ui right um that's just it from this end really really impressive i'm really grateful that you focused on the simple stuff and just made it very beautiful and i'm a fan of tailwind as well so great choice using that thanks a very interesting project uh, obviously uh, very relevant these days so i got a question for you right now as you're setting this all up, you're in the mode of basically you're sucking in all this data, but ideally you'd also be like the pusher out, right? I mean, eventually you want to be the decentralized distributor. How do, and how do, how do you see that? Like, how do you see this going forward? So I think what should be done is basically you have one thing that follows archive and the preprint platform that exists today. And one that is community-based. So you have like community-based paper and official paper. So on the community-based paper, you can vote and you have like this Wikipedia-like uh, process to upvote a bit like Reddit. You can upvote, downvote with different. So all of this is quite a complex thing with like game theory behind it and everything. But uh, you could have this review process done by the community and uh, you could have this community paper and then it's cool to have this platform where you can discover papers before they are even in preprint, which is, uh, which is nice. And, um, but the, the, um, I really think it should have like the normal one, like uh, official and community one labeled, like this is a community paper. We don't know the quality, it might be something uh, erroneous. And uh, yeah. Very cool, very cool project. Thank you, it's awesome. Thanks. Okay. Right. We'll now be beginning our 10 minute break. We'll be back very shortly. Thank you, Kathleen.
Okay, so we'll now be resuming our session. Judges, when you are ready, um, and also enter a protocol when you are ready, please start sharing your screen. But I would like to confirm with both judges, see if they're ready to begin again. Okay, looks like it, you could go ahead. Great, yeah, I'm sorry if my sound of the video is a bit quiet. I recorded when my son was sleeping, so let's share that. For a protocol, a place to request and brainstorm for NFTs that don't actually exist yet. How it works is uh, you, you have a person in mind who you'd like to ask for an NFT from them. Just enter their name. Look up a person on Twitter or Instagram. Select the person. Then we run a credit check uh, powered by Covalent Protocol. You can see that I have 50 US dollars and I have some um, wrapped ETH and DAI. This is the maximum amount I can pledge for an NFT. I, I don't actually lock up any money at this point. We wait for the creator to come back, verify their identity, upload their preview, and then everyone can actually lock up the money uh, that they'd, like, they'd like to pay for an NFT. So what I do is I go continue, and this is the place where I enter text, the request I would like to ask from a person, I enter a token where this um, request will be based, based at. I'm gonna enter 0 0.01 of ETH. Here we have a reward table. This shows you that if the NFT sells, on a, sells later on an open auction for higher amount than you pledged, um, the person who pledged in various places here will get a reward. So if the sale is above 1,000, um, for example, $1,000 in, in an auction, the person who pledged the highest will get $125. And this is for the higher amounts. So I can submit a transaction. Naturally, everyone who pledged would get a part of the reward after the final sale. The highest pledge uh, will actually get an NFT if the NFT fails to sell in an open auction. So I submit a transaction now. Prove it in MetaMask. An update gets confirmed. It should be shown in the list here. Final stage looks. Um, users can go to each page, share it, and other users can add to the pledge, which creates that baseline price and gives them the rewards. So how is this implemented? So we have a um, front-end application um, that has a credit check with Covalent in the front-end. There's additional credit check on each transaction via a Chainlink API Oracle to Covalent because we check the 24 hour price ago for your credit so that we make sure that the user didn't just get a flash loan to cheat the system. Then from the DAP, we, are, we call um, Filecoin through Web3 storage to store immutable content of the actual request, the textual content and as JSON. And then we have a subgraph of the events emitted from contract that we use to populate the front end. That's about it. This is Ventura Protocol. Thank you. All right, judges, you could go ahead with your feedback. Thank you very much. Ben, do you want to go fast? Sure, sure. All right. Uh, very, very, very nice. Uh, this is this is clearly this is the the NFT is the theme of the year. So this is. It's cool to see still individual valuable variations on that theme. So that's fun in it by itself. I have a question for you. As you, it, do you have a way to curate requests? Because I mean, requests could be just like all over the place, right? And, and then it gets very fragmented. So how, how do you curate or funnel that? Yeah, so um, the protocol itself will be kind of uncensored, but there will be a lot of bad content. I imagine people will submit because it's so cheap to, uh, on Polygon, transaction costs are low, so people will spam it and things like that. 
So cu curation is difficult, but I guess we could sort by amount of pledges based on that idea, indicating that many people think the idea is cool. Um, and we can sort by that and only show that content. Uh, front end will be basically moderated, um, but the protocol shouldn't be because it's a protocol. So each whoever builds their front end will have to moderate it in some way. Cool. I like it. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you, uh, well, I'll just say the yeah, big ops on using the covalent API, right? And uh, yeah, really proud of you for doing that. And you do know you could, um, you know, pass the data to the front end using the um, NFTs metadata endpoint, yeah? And then um, using a bunch of um, uh, our NFT endpoints. I do know, but at this at this stage, NFT does not yet exist. So uh, we we could create an NFT for representing the non-exist. It's just a representing the idea, I guess. But um, so it's kind of that pre-stage. It, it's inspired by previous project in Hack Money, which was irrevocable, and they have this idea of backing at the auction with some base price, where if the auction doesn't sell, the base price will be uh, paid to the creator. But I would say about Covalent, fantastic uh, app, um, API, um, especially the 24 hour balance we found, we found really useful because actually, um, and also cross chain credit check. So imagine you are on Polygon and you want to pledge a huge amount of, for an for a idea, uh, but you want to use your balance from the main chain, exactly. not to lock up, but just as a credit check so to say you have the money to pay if the NFT is made. So Covalent just across all chains can just build up that credit check and be able to basically say, yeah, this is like a whale or this, this person will be able to pay this. So the creator knows, oh, I can actually produce an NFT now because there's somebody interested. So nice one, man. I mean, shameless plug, big ops on using Covalent. Good one. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ventura Protocol. We'll now be moving on to team SDTD or STTT. Sorry about that. Hello. We would like to present you uh, our project, uh, Trent and me and Brahma did. It's about uh, certific certification of impact, impact and retroactive funding. I will share a video on my screen. Well, wait. So. Hi, everyone. My name is Trenton Gaddis, and I am the founder of Digital Disinformation out of Singapore. So for this hackathon, what we focused on was certification of impact. So businesses are typically well-funded uh, for things that you know have value, right? However, what's not so easy to fund are R&D uh, efforts. And so what we're trying to do with the certification of impact is to fund you know, good work that's already been done and document this with a NFT using the Zora framework minted on IPFS. Um, to open payment channels using Superfluid's ERC-777 standard while integrated with Ceramics Digital Identity Solution. Brahma will talk more about our demo. Thanks. Hi, welcome to Certificates of Impact. Certificates of Impact is about funding for research and R&D after the fact, after the work has been completed. The idea here is to propagate goods that is being done by showcasing the good work done by creating the NFTs for the good work done. And then maybe you open a auction house or make it high quality such that we attract people, create a community and flourish the good work being done. So what we have done is we have already created some NFTs for this particular account as a representation of good work being done. And these are all the ones I just loaded this particular one just four minutes back. We can, we are using Jora, IPFS, Flick, 
to load the NFTs into the system. We have not implemented the auction house yet, but uh, so we can add certifications if we want. We can, and then we can select a file, and then I can just mean that to create that NFTs. Now, if somebody somebody were to fund this particular project, so we can go to retroactive funding. Now, I already have created a funding, so that's why you see the flow from the sender to from this address to the 509 address that I'm logged in right now. If I enter the address for the user that I'm logged in, so this is basically coming back, the certification is coming back that we just loaded. Now I go back to the retroactive funding again. This is the NFT just got loaded. So if I go to retroactive funding again, I will show the reward for which this, let's say suppose this funding gets done. We can also see the flow from Superfluid dashboard. As you can see here, for this account is showing $1 per month as a token. Now also we can show the user profile that we're using using ceramics that will show the person's DID, decentralized identifier, any other profile information that we can maintain, we can update that information as well. So in NotSell, this is about creating NFTs for a good work done using Jura, IPFS, Flake, Graph, and then maintaining the user profile, the good work done in the ceramics and being able to point through Superfluid. Thank you. Thank you. So now we'll be moving on to any feedback from the judges and questions. Hey, Nadi, you can go first. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's just go with it. Uh, thanks. Uh, it was a great, great presentation. Loved it. Um, I got a question on uh, on uh, decentralized identities and how you plan on using the ceramic DID to integrate it in your overall self-sovereign identity framework. Or while you're looking for the unmute button, uh, yeah, just how, sorry. How, how, how does it bubble up? How does it bubble up? Um, I think uh, Trenton, are you there? Uh, it's all on you. This is this is his part. The the I think okay. better. Trenton. Yeah, he's on. Can you hear me? Now. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. we hear you now. Okay. Um. So what we plan on doing is integrating a ceramics digital identity solution with DeFi uh, platforms like Yearn Dot Finance and Badger Down because I think it's quite clear that uh, KYC is definitely coming to DeFi. And so we plan on ultimately uh, using, you know, providers such as Civic or perhaps another um, platform to, to do the K KYC. Uh, so we're looking to provide a comprehensive solution uh, for self-sovereign identity. Gotcha, thank you. Really impressive work, um, I just took, a brief time to look at your source code here and I would say really great what you could accomplish given the limited period of time. Really, really impressive work. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if the judges have no more further questions, we're we'll moving on to team filament finance. If you're ready, please share your screen. Hi, I'm gonna try sharing my screen. Money had gone digital. 
people began storing their cash in their own wallets and managing their investments themselves. This is not a mortgage. And if you Companies and organizations are accepting crypto payments. You set the payment date, save it, and don't worry about it. It's not so easy. It's the problem we're trying to solve. One off and repetitive payments are normal. Crypto currencies. Custom metadata that defines start and end date times at a very discreet rate. It also has a visual image, which works together with the metadata on IPFS. So I should explain that originally I had a teammate on this project who was going to be doing the technical stuff, but unfortunately he had to bail. So I continued solo and I'm just presenting thinking. There's no code to look at. Yeah, I mean, I, I did notice that when I took um, a look at the user story, I, I mean, it's pretty impressive given um, the proof of concept here and what you are trying to achieve with this. And I would say really kudos to that for um, making the effort and, you know, making it to the presentation at the end of it. Well, thanks. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, and very ambitious. So that's good. I like ambitious that, uh, that drives things forward. Uh, how do you see the implementation happening though? Like, uh, I mean, not just from a teammate perspective, but where do you see yourself sit in terms of a, a, a backend from a blockchain, for example? Well, we, we envisioned uh, a future where banking is all done via cryptocurrency. And that means you would have a banking app, which is basically a, a crypto wallet. And when we considered that, we ran into a number of, uh, a number of issues, including uh, KYC. And we also had this experience with NFTs. This is definitely the summer of NFTs. And we realized that we could reuse what we did during Hack Money and solve this problem of the, the future payments. But in terms of uh, implementation, it's, uh, it's a lot of work that uh, has yet to happen. Great, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks again, great work. Okay, so we'll be moving on. Sorry, we'll be moving on to the next team. Um, just sit tight as I get the link from one of the team members to present.
That'll be Juan, right? He's Juan. He's already here with us. Yeah, Juan, are you there by any chance? I wasn't notified at all that we had to share your video, but we can always do that right here right now. Uh, let me share the screen and, and I will play it. It was a little bit low on volume, but let's give it a try. Okay. Hi. Cool. Okay. I want to add. Hello, my name is Juan Obligado. This project is called the Exaggregator. What I want to address, well, I want to address market data prices. Usually market data prices are getting from um, centralized source as, such as Bloomberg, and you need to pay for a data maintainer that gets the data and provides that to you. A possible mechanism for this issue is well, trying to get this into a decentralized, into a decentralized ecosystem, so that into IPFS or, or some service where you can get that more easily. What I did will, uh, well, I created a composable price aggregator with using Fluence and uh, you know, Ceramic. Uh, so uh, it's a service that gets the data, reads data from the market, processes creating uh, market data bars and stores that into ceramics. Let me show you a little bit how this works. Well, here we have, uh, I had to stage this into uh, two screens. Here we have, before running this test, I was not able to deploy it yet because some had some issues, but I want to show you at least how this works. Um, here we have a bar. We have high is 3,000. 3, to 200. Uh, here we have a test that we run, which caps a new price and push that into the processing uh, service, which is running in the Fluence network. Mm. After this, we have a new value into the ceramic stream that has the new high and uh, new close. Which are the future steps for this? Well, right now, this service can be split into smaller services because it's a fat service that performs all the data processing. Also, I can add more uh, data cleaning uh, function. All, uh, we do have a dependency on ceramic client because I need to install that in, into all the nodes that runs this. So that's another room for investment to simplify uh, deployment. And we can create a custom stream site. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure. Bye bye. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Not seeing you. Hello. Yeah, we are here. Yeah. I, I, I can share the video. I don't know why. Seems that like the, the part of the screen didn't go out in the video. <laughs> ah. That's okay. Um, thank yeah. you very much. Um, if you have no further comments, we'll be moving on to the judges' QA and feedback. Sure. All right, I'll go first. Uh, uh, nice, very nice work, Juan. Uh, I got a question for you. When you said you can split things up into more streams on the price data, how would it actually work? Like, how would would you have like one ceramic stream for each price feed, or would you have like one ceramic stream for all the price feeds, and it's just within the document? That's a great question because honestly, you you would probably need one per instrument or an exchange probably because the the more granular you have that, you you would probably be able to reuse it more efficiently. Uh, those the streams tends to generate a huge amount of data. So then you can rejoin them if, if you have them separate. So I would rather have one stream per instrument and exchange and so I can then reuse that easily. Hmm. Cool, very cool, thank you. 
Yes, I mean, thank you. Thank you for explaining that because I wanted to understand that as well. I'm really impressed with project. It's so, uh, I think we would have loved to see the demo too as well, but it's, it's fine, I guess. Yeah, sorry um, for the terrible yeah. demo. <laughs> no, it's, 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 fine. it's fine. Let, 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 let last me know. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I mean, the source code is there. I can always get to run it locally. So yeah. great, great work. Impressive work, man. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you much more. Good work. Thanks. Thank you very much. We'll now be moving on to team NF Trail. If you're ready, please present. Right. Please share your screen. Yes, can you see it? Is there supposed to be some kind of audio, please? Because I can't hear a thing. Ah, you can't you can't see the audio. Oh, sorry. I have to I guess I have to reshare. I think. Oh yeah. I'll stall three times and yes. Okay. So on chain. Now? Trail. Your stuff on chain. When trading physical assets such as cars, real estate, or artwork on the secondary market, buyers often face different types of intransparencies and uh, information asymmetries. NFTrail tries to fix this by creating an on-chain document trail for these types of assets. This consists of minting an NFT for an asset using a unique asset ID, verifying this asset ID using an external data source, Oracle, and loading uh, external data based on this uh, asset ID. And then after minting, letting the owner upload and attach documents to his token. This can then later be used by anyone to verify uh, all different kinds of asset properties and can be used to support uh, all kinds of transactions. Generally, this applies to all different types of assets, but for now, we're gonna focus on the vehicles use case. Vehicles are a particularly good use case because the used car market is a real textbook case for information asymmetry and adverse selection. Also, for vehicles, we have the vehicle identification number, VIN, which is a globally unique and standardized asset ID, which we can verify uh, using public APIs and even decode to retrieve vehicle data. Now, I will show a demo based on this use case. If you open the application, you are able to register a new vehicle using the vehicle identification number and a picture of your vehicle. This picture will be uploaded to IPFS and then the CID will be connected to the token that you're about to mint. Then all you have to do is press mint. And you have minted a new asset token. Once you have minted a vehicle token, it will appear on the left side of the screen and you can click on it to view further details. Here you will see the VIN that you provided and a bunch of data that was loaded from an external API through an Oracle using this VIN. Furthermore, see the ownership history as well as a number of attached documents. Down here, you can attach a new document. For this, you have to add, add a new name and upload a file that you want to attach. Now it's uploaded to IBFS and with the attached document, we will attach the CID to the contract and thereby connect the document. If, if you want to find it, vehicle that you're not the owner of, you can do so using the search function. Now you'll see the data for this vehicle, including documents that were uploaded by its owner. NF Trail is built on a combination of different technologies. We use Web3.storage to store various data on IPFS, 
chain link to uh, access an oracle to verify the VIN and decode it, Polygon to host all of the smart contracts and the covalent API to query ownership history of the token. NFTrade is very much work in progress, so there are a variety of different improvements that uh, will need to be done to really leverage its potential, but I'm uh, looking forward very much to continue working on it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We'll now be moving on to judges' feedback and any questions that they have for you. So, no, not a question here, but basically just to cheer you, man, and say this is like really impressive. I can see the immediate use case, right? Especially um, coming from a, a third world country myself, where um, having trail on um, an asset such as a vehicle could prove very, very relevant for buyers here, yeah? because you don't want to go purchase um, a stolen vehicle or a vehicle with problems and all of that. Impressive work, man. And super impressive that you've integrated the Covalent API as well. Great work. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Um, if, so, sorry. There's also, for example, there are even APIs that you could use this vehicle identification number uh, also to retrieve like um, information whether a vehicle was uh, reported stolen. I didn't put that feature in, but it's a potential extension. Mm. Sorry. Yes, exactly. No, no, very cool. I'm a big fan of digital twin implementations and it obviously uh, has its place there. So I have one question for you. How do you plan on resolving the, the gap between, between the owner identity and the asset identity or the asset ownership? How, how, how do you prove that at the input stage? Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the issues. That's what I, um, uh, what I um, said uh, with the dispute mechanism. So right now, obviously, um, there's uh, there's nothing stopping anyone from uh, minting a token for your vehicle if they know the identification number and maybe have a picture of it. Um, but yeah, potentially uh, there could be um, like once you have a community around it, there could be like some kind of dispute mechanism where you could dispute uh, ownership and maybe provide documents uh, or other other ways of of proving that you're actually the owner. And um, maybe that way that could be one. Uh, one way, I guess. Right, but I mean, so so uh, registration or what is in Germany, Kfz and something like that. And uh, but that, but then you still need to tie to to. Eventually, it always comes down to eGov. That's where I wanted to go because even if I have registration, I still need to align it with an identity, right? Um, yeah. So uh, obviously, I think there are other upcoming. Uh, so the identity of your owner is is um, in in this system is just like represented by the uh, owning address of the token. Of course, um, there are like upcoming solutions for, for identity. And if, if you have, um, if you have uh, like some proof of humanity or something else connected to, to, this, um, to this address, then obviously it could be integrated, yeah. Very cool, very cool. Great, thank you. Great work, man, awesome. Thanks. Thank you so much. So that was actually our final team. Thank you, everybody, for participating in HackFS. Thank you, judges, for your time, for your feedback and questions. Um, and that is pretty much it. Thank you for coming. Yeah, well, thank you, Kit Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Ben. Take care, guys. Be good. Good meeting you, Mel. Bye.